Hello everyone, welcome back to another Top 10 Commander video. My name is Void. I want to talk about my picks for the Top 10 Best Partner Commander Options. Partner Commanders were introduced back in 2016 with the Commander product, Commander 2016. We have had some newer Partner Options in Commander Legends. And to clarify, I'm not going to be including the Partner with specific Commander Options. While those are still partner, they don't really offer the versatility in being able to choose any of these other commander options. So number 10 is Rograx Son of Roga. Quickly becoming a favorite in the commander format, this zero cost commander option is quite unique considering we don't really have another one. First Strike Menace and Trample, he is a zero one however, so he's a little bit balanced out there. You can't just play him turn one and take advantage of too much, it can't be that easy. But you throw on some equipments that give him some power, and suddenly you have a force to be reckoned with. Because he's a partner commander option, this is made even easier. You could throw him into a deck with Kamal Heart of Croza, and that's just an easy way to give him plus three power. Only number 10 because this is just a good combat commander option. Nothing super complicated, but a pretty cool one. And then number nine is Vile Smasher the Fierce. Again, not a super involving commander option, but really one that takes advantage of your deck and how you build around it. So Vile Smasher, what she's capable of doing, the first spell you cast on each turn, so this could be your opponent's as well, you choose an opponent at random and you are dealing damage to them equal to the spell's converted mana cost. So it's really interesting, it's kind of a chaotic card, but it pairs up really well with other commander options that are able to provide you with some excess mana. And the one I go to is Kaidel, Chosen of Krufix. So not only are you given access to four different colors, but you have a commander option that if you draw a bunch of cards, you can then play massive spells because she can tap for a lot of colorless mana. Krark the Thumbless is also another good option if you want to play more of a chaotic goblin spell slinger deck. It's one I've been exploring recently. Number eight is Akiri Line Slinger. Again, a little bit lower because I think Akiri is more focused on combat, obviously, but one that is really, really efficient. A two mana commander that gains one power for each artifact you control doesn't have to be equipment is pretty insane with first strike and vigilance. So it gives you an easy path to commander damage. Also makes a good partner option with Rograk. We also have Arden Intrepid Archaeologist, so it makes it even easier to throw a ton of your equipments onto your Akiri and swing for commander damage. Again, a lot of these are just very linear lower down on the list. But this one is pretty powerful once you do get her going. And then number seven, we have Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Sakashima is probably one of the cooler partner commander options that you can fool around with because the possibilities are endless. You can completely ignore the legendary rule, which is something you almost never really see in commander. So you can take advantage of good commander options that you would otherwise have to get rid of if you created token copies or if you clone them. So you can have two copies of a legendary creature and then take advantage of what is most likely double triggers. You could clone your Vile Smasher the Fierce so that you can get two of those triggers. It's a very interesting commander option because I think going forward, it has the highest ceiling. If we ever get more commander options that are partners, this is something that's immediately going to be looked at. As will most other partner commanders, but this one, its interaction is just so flexible. Making a copy of any good creature is always good, but specifically interacting with another partner commander that's legendary is something I think is going to age really well. And then number six, we have Ravos Soul Tender. Ravos is another very simple commander option. However, what it does is so subtle. Other creatures you control get plus one plus one, so it's an anthem. It's something that people often forget, but it does come in handy. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So it helps you recover. It's not straight up graveyard reanimation, that would be too good, but it does help you replay your creatures. And that is something, as far as partner commanders go, we don't really see anywhere else. At least on an upkeep trigger where you don't really have to do much. And then number five, we have Tevesh Svat, Doom of Fools. Tevesh is an interesting partner commander because, like Jessica, these are the only Planeswalker ones that have partner. I think it means that they can offer you more power at times because they're Planeswalkers, they're harder to deal with. That being said, I think Jessica was designed with that in mind. She's reasonably powered. I think Tevesh Svat is definitely the stronger of the two. His plus one can give you two zero one Black Thrall creature tokens, which does synergize well with many partner commander options. If you have an Anthem, like with Ravos, they get one power. But his plus one is also a way to draw you more cards. So most Planeswalkers that can do that on a plus 
are going to be more difficult to deal with. And unlike with Jessica, Tevesh has a powerful alt. You minus 10 him to gain control of all commanders. And you also gain control of the ones in the command zone. So it's a very unique, very commander format specific planeswalker, which is something I don't think we've seen before. And for that, I think Tevesh Svat deserves to be at least in the middle of the list. And then number four, we have what I think to be probably the best partner commander option of the newer cards, Kodama of the East Tree. I just think this ability is insane. It's so easy to interact with it, to combo with it, maybe not go off an in infinite, but it's just able to cheat into play so many things. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield. So that's permanent card period. That means that you can put into play lands if you get a token out there. And Hago is a popular partner to pair up Kodama with because they do interact well with each other. Whenever you get a rock into play, you can then put a land into play, which will then trigger Tago, you get another rock, then you get another land. Obviously, this is really just dependent on how many lands you have, but if you have any way to continue drawing cards, this is going to be pretty powerful. And Kodama is also just capable of synergizing with several cards in the future, very much like a Sakashima situation. I think Kodama has a lot of combo potential, maybe even competitive EDH potential one day. I think that can be very explosive. But here we go, we get to talk about things I think are more competitive, that are a little bit more powerful in my opinion. Number three, we have Timna the Weaver. I always had people get upset with me because I pronounced her name wrong, I called her Timna. And I'm sorry I mispronounced a completely made up name that I've never seen before in my life. But Timna the Weaver is just a consistent card draw engine. It's not something that gets out of hand, but Timna just does enough. So you deal combat damage to players, you pay life, and then you draw cards. Timna is cheap enough to where she does see consistent play in competitive EDH, and not just in the typical four-color Breakfast Hulk or whatever those deck variants are now, but she can be combined with a lot of other partner commander options. Being only three mana means that you can get her out there consistently, you can attack with her and start to draw cards. But even outside of competitive EDH, I think Timna is also a very valuable commander. If you're playing a life gain strategy, you have a way to gain life and reward yourself for dealing combat damage. Again, being cheap just means that you have this kind of ability on a creature that you can get out there earlier on and then attack earlier with. So it's just a really well designed option. And then number two, we have Thrasios Triton Hero. So this is another partner commander option that does see competitive EDH play and is often partnered up with Timna the Weaver. But Thrasios to me, as far as power goes, may be one of the most powerful partner commanders just because you have a mana sink here that can help you win the game. Competitive EDH and outside of it, once you get to close to, if not infinite mana, you can just use this ability to deck yourself out to get all of the lands that you want and then win the game pretty easily with something like Athos's Oracle. But even outside of competitive EDH, again, these are very powerful commanders. Thrasios is a mana sink, so if you have nothing else to do in a commander game, which, I mean, let's face it, a lot of the time we don't draw into what we want to draw into, and we're stuck doing nothing. So you have an ability here, it is four mana, so it's not the easiest one to repeat, but mid to late game, you can do it twice. And being able to scry first and then leave a land on top, just so you can put it into play tapped, I think is a very, very good setup ability. And being only two mana, it's kind of a Timna situation again. He lends himself well to competitive decks because if your opening hand isn't really what you want it to be, you have a very good backup plan here. You have something that's incredibly reliable and the ability is useful in every deck. All right, so before I go on to number one, let's talk about some honorable mentions. We have Tana the Bloodsower, who I think is very good, very close to making this list. I just think long term, most of the commander options here are gonna age well. We have Silas Wren, Seeker Adept, very good for artifact decks. I think artifact partner decks are quite underrated, but it's another one where you have to deal combat damage in order to trigger something. You get to choose an artifact card in your graveyard and you get to cast it this turn. So depending on what your deck does, that can be really powerful. And then we have Krark the Thumbless, who I mentioned earlier. If you want to make a Spell Slinger deck, I think Krark just is capable of being a very, very powerful combo commander. So number one, we have Bruce Tarl. Borish Herder. It's hard for me to look at any other partner commander and feel the same kind of joy that I feel when I look at Bruce Tarl. No matter when I play him, it doesn't matter what part of the game I play him, he's always useful. And that's so rare. 
You get a lot of partner commander options here that you need a setup for, and they might be good early game, but late game they're kind of average. Bruce Tarl is just power throughout the game because his ability can be given to other creatures you control. Whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks, so he can be a very powerful ETB creature, target creature you control gains double strike and lifelink until end of turn. And since you're in Boros colors here, you're probably going to attack. At the very least, you have a 3-3 with double strike and lifelink. But you have so many possibilities because he's a partner. You could give it to something like Dargo the Shipwrecker. Or if you want to do even more damage, you can partner him up with Jessica Thrice Reborn. Hey, you're going to deal triple damage with a creature who has double strike. Yeah, sign me up for that. You can wait for your Ishai Ojitai Dragon Speaker to get even bigger and then give it double strike and lifelink. Just no doubt in my mind who is the most powerful partner commander option. I mean, if we were to just talk about the actual creature itself and not about the decks, not about the competitive EDH aspect to some of those other commanders, Bruce Tarl is useful no matter the situation. At, at the bare minimum, he is going to give that ability to himself and still deal a ton of damage and gain you a bunch of life. If you're behind in the game, if you have a low life total, you're easily going to get back into it. Photo negative Steve Harvey is just an absolute boss. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the 10 best partner commander options in the commander format. If you like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Leave a comment. Let's talk about this. Void here signing off. Have a wonderful day.